So hello, I'm Julia Rose, I'm Managing Director of Trillion Fund. Um, I'm also Chair of the Crowdfunding Association. I'm on the board of Move Your Money and I'm the Director of Logo2 um, with Jamie in the back. It's a pan-European way of booking engine. European meal made easier, www.local2.com. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about crowdfunding as a solution to democratising finance and decentralising energy. And yes, people do take the piss and say that's a slightly lofty ambition, but really we feel in response to Duncan's stuff, the two go hand in hand, um, and they really can't be separated. We're very happy to just raise a nice big chunk of money from the very mad and rather glorious Vivian Westwood who is of the same view um, that we can use the two together as we're going to get absolutely nowhere. Um, I'm not going to do the slides. I was going to just show you a quick animation, if that's okay. We just finished it last week. I've never shown it to anyone before. It's probably a bollocks. Um, but I thought I would show it to you guys, and maybe then it's got two seconds of feedback later. Please tell us. We're trying to find a way to explain what's quite a complicated concept very quickly. ways to make our money work harder, to beat inflation and generate better returns. And that's not easy. The high street banks bruised by the financial crisis offer poor returns, and you might get the feeling that they're not nearly as interested in looking after your money as they are their own. Meanwhile, the big money gets access to investment opportunities many of us never see, notably investments in building energy infrastructure. Any way you look at it, energy investments can make sense. Demand for energy is soaring and shows no sign of slowing down. At the same time, those annual energy price hikes on your utilities bills are a sure sign that fossil fuels are getting ever more expensive. But wind, solar, hydro and biomass energy production costs are typically falling. So where do you think the smart money is going? Some investors are putting their money into renewable energy infrastructure power generation projects that are environmentally sustainable. So, isn't it time everyone had an opportunity to get a slice of the clean energy pie? That's where Trillion Fund comes in, opening up sustainable energy investments to a broader investor base, and in doing so, speeding the planet's transition to a low carbon economy. Whether you have 100 or 100,000 pounds to put to work, whether you're thinking about your pension or how you can make a difference, Trillium Fund is a place to connect with sustainable energy infrastructure projects so that all of us could profit from an energy revolution that could be good for your bank account and for the planet. Join the Trillium Fund community today to become a part of this extraordinary movement and do things better together. Trillium Fund, crowd investing for our future. Has everyone read the risk warning? Yeah. <laughs> Is anyone from the Financial Conduct Authority here this evening? <laughs> it's all going to go very, very well. So, um, I founded British Airways.com in the 90s. I did a stint in venture capital. Um, I did seven years in the wind turbine developer. We did the very beautiful wind turbines at the Olympic Park. Um, and then I had to go into solar for two years for some therapy, because I work in demand generation, I like to make people want things, I like to raise money and do the sales and marketing, I am not the techie, you've worked that out already. Um, and there's only so much I can do to get the technology working, and, and I really, it was so difficult with the turbines was this beautiful piece of kit driven by the Merton rule, and it, um, the uh, uh, power curve was completely perfect from an aerodynamic point of view, the electrical losses were huge, and we just <coughs> couldn't get to the point where the market viability was there. But we were there at the time of Greenwash. We were there at the time when Sainsbury's and Marks and & Spencer's and Rolls-Royce and DEFRA and everyone was desperately trying to look green. In some ways, it was easier to persuade people about the issues, from my experience, back in 2005 than it is now. Because it was new then, it was exciting, lots of big numbers, lots of shiny things going on. I think people are really kind of disappointed and we've, we've gone almost backwards in some ways. And from a communication point of view, that's a very, very big job we've got to do to try and get people engaged again. Um, so I did six or seven years in wind, two years in solar because actually it did what it said on the tin. And in all that time, I tried pretty much every campaign I could think of to get people to want to do the right thing from an environmental point of view. And none of them worked. Right? What works is what's in it for me. The best campaign we did was 
how much money can your roof make? Um, so really, I think I've got to the point where I'm done trying to persuade people to give a shit because it's the right thing to do, really. It's just a waste of time from that perspective. I want to try and find how we can use profit as motivation to drive behaviour, right? So that's what Trillion Fund is about. This is about a really interesting sector to be in. This is about the new oil rush. This is about the returns which used to go to the venture capital trusts and the EIS funds who made a mint out of this just to be king over the last three or four years. And the reason I jumped from Ingenza, which was the solar company, to Trillion was the feed-in tariff dropped from 43p down to 21p, down to 16.8p, and you've never seen people move faster out of the market from that point of view. But at that point, this was a mature technology. This does what it says in the tin. There are no moving parts. The sun is free. The operating costs are very low. You can insure against losses. This is a much more mature, established technology than it was at the start. So whilst the returns have dropped down, the risks have dropped down at the same time, and there's still a really solid risk-adjusted return available in solar. It's just it's no good if you're a VCT and you're trying to get 11, 12, 13%. But it's bloody good if you've got 100 quid and your only option is to put your money into the Derbyshire Building Society and get a 1.8% interest rate when inflation is above that level. So we're trying to solve two problems at the one time. We're trying to find a way to draw new capital into renewable energy projects purely motivated by profit. And we're trying to find a solution to the man in the street whose level of satisfaction with banks has never, ever been higher. And there is a wave of innovation coming through. We think we're very close to an inflection point. I am an ambulance chaser. I like to be the first person behind the opportunity. That's what BritishAirways.com was about in 94. This is another big move, the FinTech move from our perspective. So what we think we're going to see happening is sufficient choice and innovation coming through in financial services at a time when the satisfaction with the banks is so high that that starts to push people over the edges, and that's our bet. So, yes, saving the planet, bringing down the banks at the same time in the next five years. Who wants to come with that? So I was going to do a quick um, walk through. You probably all know masses about crowdfunding already. Yes, so uh, raise up your hand. Can I give a city of hands if you have invested by crowdfunding? Wow, you lot. And, and has anyone actually been involved in any part of building or growing crowdfunding businesses? Yes, perfectly, you have. Correct. So just a quickie walk through, and then there's questions at the end. There's no way I've got 20 minutes of content. That's just not going to happen. So um, it's a very simple idea, of course. I mean, it's the idea that instead of having 10 high net worth investors giving you 100,000 pounds each, you might get a thousand pounds from a thousand investors, no more sophisticated than me. And it did come from the creative industry and it was originally donation based. Obviously, you got your t shirt or your name in the credits, etc. I think 10% of the films at Sundance last year were crowdfunded. But it's now becoming about the crowd investing. Um, and in the UK, there are both debt and equity <coughs> crowdfunding platforms, which means you can raise money for your business, whether you're pre or post revenue, and whether you're large or small. Um, the market size is about 2.7 billion last year. It's supposed to be five billion dollars this year, and yes, the lion's share of that is the states. But mm -hmm. theirs is all donation-based, and actually, the UK is way ahead in terms of the investment side of things. So we hope that the Facebook for finance is going to be a Brit-based company rather than American from that point of view. Um, we're sized at about 500 million now, if you include the peer-to-peer -peer guys and our close cousins from that point of view, and growing very, very rapidly. And we're poised to really head in one of two directions. And I think the really critical thing in where the market goes is, I'm afraid, the regulation. Um, the Financial Conduct Authority, or the Financial Services Authority, as it was in the summer, came out and said that crowdfunding was really only for what they call sophisticated investors. Because as we all know, if you're rich, that means you're clever. And if you're poor, you're thick. Um, I come from Northern Ireland, which is a grammar school system. So you only go to public school if you're thick and your daddy's rich. Um, and I think there's some parallels here because just the idea that because you don't have money to invest means you can't understand something as direct and as simple as crowdfunding is kind of abhorrent. So the reason I share the Crowdfunding Association is we want to keep the crowd in crowdfunding. This is about financial inclusion. This is about the 95% who can't raise money for their businesses and can't get access to investment opportunities that people can. Not the 5% who can and still pay less of the cost when things will go horribly wrong. So the key thing, I think, and one of, the, one of the arguments we try and use with the FCA to try and help them understand that 
crowdfunding is about the crowd, is that this is not some complex derivative. This is not investing through your independent financial advisor into a bank, into a pension fund, into another entity. I mean, it's very true what you say about the pension fund. They are buying up renewable energy assets like there's no tomorrow. Um, so Octopus sold 45 million to RBS, and um, PIC bought 50 million from solar power generation, uh, HomeSun sold their entire portfolio to Aviva. These guys know a good thing when they see it. And you're looking at a massive asset producing revenue, quite often index linked if they're done on a fit basis, growing year on year, which is solid and low risk and a great return. And what we're trying to say is the opportunities which the pension funds are buying up and the opportunities which the VCTs have been investing in for the last three or four years, merrily making a fortune, are really good opportunities for the retail market and are very appropriate for use there as well. And that's really what Trillia Fund is about. Um, because the investment amounts are so small, I mean, it's 20 quid. I mean, abundance generation is five pounds. So most of us can afford to lose five pounds. Um, and the idea is that you can go in and you can try something without having to be massively intimidated by the whole world of financial services. I'm very new to it. I've just sat my exams. Um, I spent an entire day researching bonds and then went, it's a loan. It's taken me a day to work out. It's a freaking loan. It is not as hard as it looks. They want you to think it's hard. That's how they justify their existence. We've been here before. So there is a fair amount of institutional pushback already to what we're doing, even when we're a very small size. Um, but uh, the interest in the area is massive. So I'm supposed to be in a meeting with Vince Cable, but you're all lovely. Um, <laughs> um, Harriet Harman, Ed Davey, um, Ed Basie. Uh, there's all the politicians are involved and are very interested. We're going to see Cameron in a couple of weeks' time. I saw the chair of the Financial Conduct Authority last week. He looked at me like, who is this person who's walked into my space? But it's such a hot topic and people are really, really ready for change. And I think what people recognise is the banks don't have the will or the way to provide the finance which SMEs need for growth and SMEs are the future of the economy in the UK. So on the one hand, we've walked into a space, we've walked into a void that the banks have left. And because the retail banking sector isn't fulfilling it, this is a great opportunity for us to do it. And energy is a really good sector to do it in. So um, I think the, the key thing for anybody um, interested in actually using crowdfunding is it's not just about the money that you can raise. It's not really an easy option. Well, it's easy compared to going to NatWest and talking to their very stupid business lending manager who has no clue about business and you want to strangle after 10 minutes. Um, but it's not just a question of putting your hand up and going, hi, I've got a sexy thing, would you like to invest? Because the crowd will love you or they will kill you from that point of view. And if you put a raise up there and you don't raise the money, you have to kind of ask yourself the question, was well, it the pitch that I got wrong or is it the product that sucks? Um, and if you do raise the money, it's a pretty good indication for multiple reasons you're on the right track. It's, it's a curious audience, it's a form of test bed telling you what they think. And when you raise that money, you kind of get a buzz of the feeling of backing at the same time. And you know you've got a gang of people, the crowd, who are really behind you um, from that perspective. So I'd encourage everyone to have a go if you haven't had a go already. Um, I think the message for us is you know, we don't need huge, complex, too big to fail institutions to get involved in the process. Um, this is just human to human, project to project, people to people, peer to peer. Um, and I think that we can cut out so many of the fees and we can add so much of the transparency and we can create a connection between people and where their money goes. Because I think that's what the dissatisfaction is about. I think it's about the older days thinking you put your money into a bank and there was like a little bit of gold powder which represented your money sitting in a vault somewhere. Or is in fact you put your money in and as soon as you put it in it goes out to somewhere else. And you have no idea where that money is going. And if it's your pension, you know, if you're lucky it's PIC or Aviva going out and buying solar plants. In reality they're doing the very, very opposite of that. And what we think we're seeing with the Move Your Money team is a huge swage of people coming through saying I'm not happy and I am not having this and this is my money and I've worked hard and I've paid my tax on it don't tell me where I can invest it and when I've got it over there I want to see where it is and what it's doing and that's what we're trying to encourage with crowdfunding is this direct connection you can see where your money is the difference it's making all the time um, so in conclusion um, Trillion Fund is one year old a little bit more today I've got £1.2 million worth of money. I've got Vivian Westwood, 
asset. I don't know if you'll add the asset. Um, we are, she's wonderful, but she's in um, We're sponsored by Otto Lenghi. We've got a huge number of celebs behind us, because I'm sorry, celebs work, so it's got to be done. We've got a bunch of high net worth individuals. Um, you've got me, obviously, as the managing director. Um, what we don't have is a tech partner in crime, and if anybody would like a slug of equity and thinks they could put up with me. Um, 12 hours a day, I'd really love to speak to anybody in the pub or whether they might like to build God's own crowdfunding platform and save the planet and take back the brains. Right. Cool.